Today we're going to start the notes for the chemistry unit. This is going to be just a general PowerPoint of lots of information that we're going to go into a lot more detail later on. But this will give us the basics that we need uh, to really start studying chemistry. So go ahead and put chemistry at the top of your notes and we'll get started. If we're learning about chemistry, we definitely need to know the definitions. So the definition that we're going to be using for chemistry is the study of the properties of matter and how matter changes. So using the Cornell notes, go ahead and write the word on the left, write chemistry on the left, and then on the right, write the definition, the study of the properties of matter and how matter changes. So what is matter? Well, matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. We're going to break matter down into several different components. Uh, we're going to talk about three of them today, elements, compounds, and mixtures. An element is something that cannot be broken down physically or chemically into any other substance. You should be familiar with the periodic table of elements, and you learned that last year. We'll talk about it a lot more this year, too. Uh, the next type of matter we'll talk about is compounds. A compound is when two or more elements are chemically combined in a specific ratio. And then we have mixtures. A mixture is two or more substances, elements, compounds, or all three, in the same place, but not combined as new material, so they can still be separated. Physical properties are things that can be observed without changing a material. So, for example, uh, you can observe the color of something, the temperature, melting, boiling, or freezing point, something's weight, length, volume, mass, density, odor, taste, texture, sound, solubility, shape, viscosity, elasticity, and lots of other things, too. We'll talk about this in more detail in class later. Substances also have chemical properties. And chemical properties deal with how matter reacts and changes with other types of matter. So then, what's the difference between the two? Well, a physical change alters the appearance or form of something, but it doesn't necessarily turn into a different type of matter. Chemical changes are unpredictable changes in color or temperature. So for instance, if you take two clear chemicals and mix them together and they turn red, that's an unpredictable color change. Or if you take two room temperature chemicals and mix them together and they get really hot, that's also an unpredictable change because you don't expect two room temperature things to get really hot all of a sudden. The formation of a precipitate is another way that we can tell a chemical change has occurred. And a precipitate is another word for like clumping or, or chunks. So if we're mixing two liquids together and it starts to get chunky or clumpy, then we, that is a precipitate and a chemical change has taken place. Another way that we know a chemical change has occurred is with the production of a gas. And we know that a gas is being produced if we see bubbles forming in a liquid. Chemical reactions. Um, when we have a chemical reaction, it's we're going to produce new materials that are chemically different from what we started with. So the starting materials of a chemical reaction are called reactants, and the ending materials are called products. We are going to be doing some math when we're working with chemistry. We're going to be balancing chemical equations, and you did that a little bit last year, too. Um, chemical reactions are going to be written as, an e as equations. The arrow is going to point to the product, so if you see the blue arrow there. So, for example, if we take lead nitrate and add it to potassium iodide, it's going to produce lead iodide and potassium nitrate. So take a look at that chemical reaction equation there. What are the reactants in that? What about the products? When we have a chemical reaction, we have products. So we talked about reactants are the first part, and the products are the outcome of the chemical reaction. And products can be divided into two categories. They can be useful things, things that we wanted to get, or they can be byproducts or waste products. If you take a quick look at the picture uh, on the right, you will notice that that is a chemical reaction because you're taking two clear liquids, mixing them together, and it's turning yellow. That's an unpredictable color change. When we write chemical equations, we're going to use the element symbols to write the chemical formulas. The element symbols are found on the periodic table of elements, and again, we'll review that later. So some rules for chemical equations are the first letter of the element symbol always has to be capitalized, and then any letters that come after that have to be lowercase. We're also going to use numbers in chemical equations. Um, the large numbers that come before the symbols 
are going to be called coefficients. These tell us how many molecules there are of a substance. Then we have small numbers that are subscripts. They're going to be a little bit below the uh, chemical symbol, and they're going to come after the chemical symbol or the element symbol. These are going to tell us how many atoms there are of an element. So then what are atoms and what are molecules? Well, an atom is the smallest part of an element, and then a molecule is a combination of two or more atoms. So take a quick look at the picture. Is that an atom or a molecule? While we're balancing equations, there's going to be a law that's really important to us. This is called the law of conservation of mass. And it states that matter can be neither created nor destroyed. It always has to exist in some form. So in a reaction, the amount of mass stays the same. It cannot change at all. This means that our chemical equations have to be balanced. We're going to talk about four different types of chemical reactions. The first one is a synthesis reaction. This is when two or more reactants combine to make one product. The next type is decomposition. This is when one reactant breaks apart into two or more products. Then we have single replacement, where one element replaces another in a compound, and double replacement, where two elements in different compounds trade places. That's all for now. We're going to talk about this a lot more in class. So if you're confused about something, jot down or put a star by what you're confused about, and we'll talk about it later.